This is the besotted Pride of West. And the podcast, and we're coming to you on the eve of the Chelsea game. Bit of a late one this week because there's been a bit of a busy week for characters in the house. But still, we've got to have a little bit of a chinwag and talk to you about the game at the weekend, the big West London derby. I've got my man Laney in the virtual joint with me. Laney, how are you? I'm very good, mate. I'm very good, yeah. Looking forward to, um, well, as, as much as you can do. Looking forward to a trip to uh, Stamford Bridge tomorrow. It's been, uh, it's, been a, it's been a good hunting ground for us the last couple of years. So I uh, don't really go there with the same fear as I as I used to. But um, we shall see what happens, mate. That's plenty right. to talk about. Plenty to talk about. That's right, that's right. And like I said to you, Chelsea... We're playing Chelsea. We're, um, you know, and to be fair, you know, going to Chelsea is there's the champions. Right, right? I mean, they, they, they thought they were champions of Europe, or well, Leeds actually thought they were champions of Europe, but Chelsea thought they were champions of Europe at some stage. But we went, we go there at champions, the West London champions. We won the West London Mini League last season. Redford top, their third, second, Chelsea third, and QBR was somewhere down below there, somewhere completely as well. So uh, we're going back into this game keeping our fingers crossed that we can actually kind of keep our way going in the West London Millie League. We've got a little bit of a way to go this season, but like I said to you, you know, it's it's a marathon, not a sprint, isn't it, Laney? Well, some some very wise man once said it's a nine-month season, Bill. And, um, <laughs> I've heard and, about um, it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, He's gone so, out in the annals of history. Uh, annals, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yes. Um, so, <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a long way to go. I mean, it, how, it, it was just interesting coming back from that awful defeat you know at uh, at Old Trafford and seeing how the team sort of bounced back or didn't bounce back um, you know a lot of people thought that was you know there would be a hangover from that and it would have knocked confidence but you, know, you could see Thomas Frank had gotten pumped up last week and um, you know we, we really kind of did everything we needed to do we approached the game the right outlook and the right sort of uh, pace and the tempo from the beginning was, was was perfect so we just needed to get that second goal when it comes so yeah I mean you know we're going to the game in decent nick to be honest Bill which is yeah which is which is good and we're going to talk about that Burnley game a little bit later but just just coming back to uh you know things I mean I mean you talked to me earlier about you know uh fair fairness I mean you were talking about the I mean we we're talking about we're going for XG and we're going through the fairness of the XG and you know and luckiness and, and all sorts of stuff that's going on uh, but talking about fairness I mean uh, I mean I don't know if you remember the, there was a band in the in the 90s called Tony Tony Tone Actually, uh, a bit of an R&B. Do you remember Tony, 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 Lane? I, I don't really know. Oh, you don't remember Tony? Did, did you, oh, it sounds like you just made that up. Mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, mate, Tony, Tony, Tony were massive. I think there's characters out there that know everything about Tony, Tony, Tony. Um, but you, you've never heard of sort of Tony, Tonali, Tone, or, or maybe uh, Tonali? No. No. Yeah. No, it's you haven't actually. They're just more, more words that you just invented. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right, actually. I'm sort of kind of talking gibberish, but I'm not talking gibberish because I'm talking about Tony, obviously, as our player. And uh, he got, uh, um, as you know, he got, well, I'll say done, in effect. I mean, I was, I was going to try and make it a little bit kind of sort of smoother than that. But no, he got done for, for illegal gambling and he got banned for a number of months. It seems that it's kind of sort of it seems to run in the name as well, because now there's a player called Tonali who's also got done, right, you know what I'm saying, and if you thought he might have been a member of Tony Tonali, Tony. <laughs> no, it's, um, Tonali is actually Italian for toenail, though, if you oh, did, okay. you know, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, well, we, you know, we, we talked on the Ivan Tony podcast that we thought that gambling, footballers gambling was, was, was rife, you know, um, Tony and, and um, Gruffalo and Tuffalo, whatever his name is, he, he, this is the tip of the iceberg. I think it, I think it's rife within the game, and, and you know we said that well, we suggested that the only way to deal with it really was to have kind of an amnesty where players could actually come out and kind of confess, and it, it every, everything would be kind of considered in a in a kind of a, um, a way that kind of got rid of the, 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 the got rid of the, the problem once and for all and properly. I think we're going to get more and more of this coming out. But you're right, you know, Tonali. But, uh, so, uh, so, so what's happened with Tonali, Laney? So Tonali has been found guilty of betting irregularities by the Italian FA, I believe, um, and um, he was returned. Um, he was called up for the Italian uh, national team for the for the break just gone, and he was he was sent home from from that, or sent back to Newcastle um, from from that. And um, the Italian FA have, have said that it's going to be a 10-month ban, I believe, um, starting immediately. However, 
you know, looking at the looking at Sky and looking at some of the you know the news, the, the football news um, websites today. Uh, Newcastle are saying they haven't actually got the paperwork to to, to say that the ban um, is it starts with immediate effect. I, I'd imagine that would come through, but they're saying he travels with the team, um, and there's a good chance he may play for Newcastle this Saturday um, or this weekend until they get told he can't. Which you know it's fair. You know Ivan Tony played for us until we were told he couldn't, um, so we, we, we cracked on. I, I, I think it's Newcastle's right to crack on, but. Um, I'm expecting um, him not to play this weekend. So yeah, I, I, I just think it's it's a big problem within the game. Um, there's a lot of lot of very rich young men um, with a lot of time on their hands, and you know, um, betting is so easy. <laughs> you know, it's it's yeah. and and for them, I guess it's 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 fairly fairly fun. Um, but you know, they know the rules, and um, you know the rules, and you get caught, you're gonna have to do the punishment. I mean, there's something sort of slightly different uh, about this one because, you know, Ivan Tony wasn't allowed to train with the team, do anything football-wise for a number of months, and then afterwards he was kind of incorporated back into the team. Whereas uh, Tony Tony Sonali apparently is uh, still not allowed to train with the team. And there's a, there's, a, there's a few little differences, aren't there? Yeah, uh, well, yes, because I, I don't think the actual punishment's been served. I, I, I think, you know, Tony carried on with us, didn't he, until um, that, that, you know, the ban came into effect what i'm saying is i don't think that ban has actually come into effect and once it does i presume that the worldwide football activity ban that ivan tony had to stick to um applies to to him as well but i you know the the, the fa serving the ban is the italian one not the the english fa and i think that's the reason why they think that maybe there might be a few things that are slightly different um and you know again with situations like that you probably would have expected them to sort of kind of be kind of uh, consistent across the board across all the different fa's and and how they deal with these things because obviously you get the uh, the accusation of as we say fairness you know what is fair and what is not fair you know so it's it's okay to sort of gamble in in, in italy because you can get certain you know certain things that other people wouldn't i mean listen we're not we're not condoning the gambling here but we, i think we're more looking at how it's been dealt with and it needs to be sort of dealt with more consistently because I think we even as fans it, listen we're not sitting down there saying no Tony's fine he's, he's right we know what he's done but at the end of the day when we looked at you know a few of these 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 gambling situations I mean we had like I said we had a player in the lower leagues who had I think he'd done worse gambling than Tony and he I think he, he kind of got off with a suspended sentence or probably not even any sentence or something like that as well so again which I know that Tony sort of flagged up now at the end of the day as we say if you don't do the crime you ain't going to get in trouble so that's what you have to look at personally but i think there's got to be a bit of consistency across all of football when this kind of happens where it looks like you're kind of picking on somebody uh, as you don't pick on anyway as some people think that clubs do when uh, the bigger clubs seem to get away with certain things when the smaller clubs don't do even when it's like you know certain decisions in stadiums and stuff like that where uh, i think manchester united i think we were talking about that a couple of weeks ago didn't we laney yeah we did yeah i mean you know the referees get on first name terms with their players and don't even can't even tell the two blonde defenders apart when when one's offside and one's not offside um it's yeah it, it's 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 a it is a problem and you're right to say you know about um yeah, punishments being consistent across players and across leagues and across countries because you know we've said it before and I'll, and I'll say it again it still hurts that you know Brentford Football Club are being punished as much as as the player himself and taking a 20 goal striker out of a team like Brentford team like Brentford yeah yeah um, Brentford. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, is is gonna is gonna hit you, you we, we, we're not equipped to take a 80 to 100 million pound player out of our team and it, it just have no effect at all we've done a fairly good job early on but in, in some matches it's, it's it's going to be it's going to be sort of evident there where there's a gaping hole and there's that Ivan Tony shaped hole in that team so you know it's, I know we, we do bang on about this a lot but it's a, it's a big deal definitely it is a big deal let me uh, tell you something Laney I mean let's just move it on from that okay a positivity uh, tell you something there's one place that I have been to 
quite a lot and i even went there fairly recently i was there a couple of days before the u.s tour um that brentford went on in the summer as well and uh, the reason why i didn't go to the first game in philly because i actually was in nice with my family we went to go and see the weekend as you do so we flew to nice to go and see the weekend over there thought was very happy because it's a favorite band and we had a nice little weekend in, <laughs> in watching the weekend in nice but also what we do is a bit of a tradition that i do as well like every time i go to nice you could take the little train that goes over to italy and then you stop off in monaco and i stopped off in monaco with my family i showed them my little kind of like this is what i do when i go on european tour with uh, with the england we always like when we're in nice we go across to monaco because actually believe it or not there's a bar in monaco which is actually on the front with all the kind of boats and everything like that and it does a happy hour for about three or four hours and it's about four pound a pint in monaco and it's brilliant it's a lovely bar as well and a lot of people probably don't know that so like we pop down there spoons (laughs) <laughs> absolutely not you know there's a little bit of a spoon boycott going it's been going on for about four years as you know lady so this is definitely not spoons this is a it's called bar monaco as well funny that uh, so you, love it. you made that up as well haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> and they do pizzas and beer on a happy hour as well i think the pizzas are about seven euros or eight euros and the beer is about four euros or something like that and you know listen this is in monaco so it's amazing so we Mm. did a little bit of beach action in monaco as well then we came down there and we did a little bit of bar monaco but the reason why i'm mentioning it is that i went to to monaco and i've been there with all my characters as well from england i've met shaggy actually upstairs in the in nikki beach on the roof as well and i've said shaggy he's done anyway no doesn't and so i met the shaggy there and uh but not this time because shaggy and his friends didn't happen to be in stains the other day did they laney no no but the (laughs) monaco under 21s they had the the pleasure of uh forsaking the river the 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 actual mediterranean riviera with the thames riviera um and they 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 were they were at wheat chief lane stains for the uh for a b team game but brentford b versus monaco under 21s um which is a the biggest come down you, you'll ever get probably <laughs> for those monaco lads and i, I can take the piss out of stones because i grew up there so it's it's all right for me to do so but uh yeah it's it's i don't think when they signed their their contracts they they thought that that was going to happen you know i just saw them knocking around the elmsley center on, on on wednesday afternoon with river island bags etc so they, they made the most of it and we popped down to the uh the anglers afterwards for a hunter's chicken and uh yeah they made the most of being in stains but yeah it's uh it's a game i think we drew 2-2 um and uh more importantly and more seriously ivan tony played in that um, not, not tonali though yeah. no not tonali okay. uh the lesser, lesser spotted Charlie Good made an appearance, um, and um, I believe that um, Ben Mee um, got some minutes. Yeah. So, so yeah, so uh, there was there was some positivity from that. So yeah, yeah. So, but in- interesting that we're going to start playing our B games at Staines Town's his old ground, which is you know it's, it's, a, it's a shame for Staines Town their, their demise. It's been it's been shenan- shenanigans down there, which we won't really go into too deeply because I don't know all the ins and outs there. But um, there's yeah. It's, it's a it's a terrible story for a for a for a, for the club. Um, you know, Brentford played them in the FA Cup not so long ago, um, and they've always you know they've always been there. They've been there for donkey's years, and they, you know, just uh, it was a nice little setup they had down there. It's redeveloped, and Brentford used to go down there for friendlies pre-season, etc. Um, and you know now we're now we're sort of playing our, our B games there and, and keeping the facility alive. Yeah. Okay. So listen. Yeah. So the Monaco under twenty ones with the with the B team as well. The B team adventure goes on as well. And uh, yeah. Listen. Let's see how that goes on. But listen. Let's take a little break. After the break, we're going to come back and we're going to talk Burnley. Burnley came down to New Griffin Park for the first time since they complained because we basically celebrated like we'd won the European Cup and uh, I think they were probably a bit disappointed yet again because we did celebrate like we'd won the European Cup yet again because we were very happy because it was our first home win of the season and why can't we have a good sing song and a dance around when you've won a match when you haven't won a match at home for probably the best part of six months now I suppose it was May, June, July, August, September, October. yeah it's nearly six months that we haven't won at home I mean there was a bit of a break in between but that doesn't matter so but anyway so it, uh, Burnley coming down to us it was uh, it was a good game and if anything Laney it was uh, it was it was a kind of walk in the park almost wasn't it 
Yeah, relatively speaking, it was. Uh, you know, as I said a little bit earlier, getting after we scored the first one. I mean, three beautiful goals. We we'll start with the first one. You know, I, I still, I still, there's still confu some confusion over whether there was, an, you know, whether it should have been ruled out. Um, Neil Moore plays goal for offside. I, I assume it was a correct decision in the end, but you know, different people have different opinions still on that. But when we actually did take the lead, um, we saw ghosting in at the back post, beautiful ball across by Mbumo, great build-up play. Um, the front three looked, looked great, more played with, with, with Wisa and, and Bumo looked, looked really tight, looked on the same wavelength. A lot of positives there. Uh, it was We were just waiting for that second goal. Uh, Burnley had a, a penalty appeal that, that, that fortunately um, didn't go to VAR and they had a couple of other chances, one just whistled past the post. Uh, so if, if by getting a second goal, I, I, then I could start to believe a little bit more. And then they had a chance where you know they missed an open goal and then the third the third goal. But you know, uh, and Bumo's curler into the top corner, and then um, the the Godos the Godos absolute thunderbolt was they were be be two beautiful goals, or th three beautiful goals really. Uh, so it could have been it could have been more, you know. Um, I was disappointed with Burnley. I thought they, there would be more about them than that. And but you know, it's you, you have to beat what's in front of you, and we did that really in style. I thought, I thought, I thought we looked really good. It wasn't just down to them being bad. I thought we were good too. Yeah, I mean we were. And if you've got the Pacific Global Player of the Match as well, done by the Tasmanian B out there, listen to every single match. Well, wicked job being done on this as well. Uh, this is done by votes alone. We've had, we've had, a, had a couple of people complaining, sort of saying, oh, you know, uh, uh, basically we're going to say Brian and Bumo won it, okay, and he, he won it good as well. You know, number two was Manil Malpe, and number three was Wisa. But I'm not being funny. This is like this is not us. This is not me and Laney sitting down there thinking, right, who are we going to choose today? We put it out to the vote, and people come back and they vote and they come back and this is what it is and also the club also put out to a vote I think they had about 70% voted on Neil Malpay so we were a bit confused there was characters who were kind of moaning about sort of kind of Mimbumo getting some plaudits wasn't it Laney? Yeah it's a bit weird out there isn't it social media sometimes it's, it's, you know, it allows people that just really don't really know what they're talking about to, to pretend they do you know Brian Mbumo has been a great player for Brentford uh, no he's not Kylian Mbappe, no, he's not. <laughs> some some other, no, he's not Mo Salah. Uh, you know, he's still a young player, getting better and better every year. And uh, to, to 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 take on the mantle of you know the leading goal scorer at our club in the Premier League this season, and to do it so well and to create so many assists, his his, his standards of performance have been excellent. Yeah, you, you, of course, you could have scored a couple more goals, but you know, he's just, that's that's part of the way Brentford are, you know, our, our players aren't at that world-class elite and some of them pushing, pushing to get there. But, you know, Brian Mbumo is one of the best players that's ever played for our club and to, to give him, to, to disrespect him, I think it's just a bit, a bit petty. Mm, yeah, I mean, listen, just going back to the match itself, uh, XG wise, 2.85 to the Bs, and I think it's 0 0.95 for, uh, for, 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 for 0 0.91 actually for Burnley. Uh, which you know just basically says the three nil probably did to justify itself. If anything, you could say actually Burnley probably might have deserved a goal. And I think about the game that I remember. I thought, oh my god, oh yeah, that, that guy in front, literally right in front of the goal. And I don't know what he did. He kind of like you know he just he just sort of rectangular footed himself right up, didn't he? And uh, <laughs> open goal, open goal. And, and I just got no idea how he actually missed that goal from what I said. I, don't, I haven't looked at it back on TV as yet, but I, it must have been about eight yards or maybe ten yards out. And the, and and it, and it was just him. And uh, Flecken, you know, is one, is one or the other for that one, wasn't it? Yeah, he he he, he helped it out for a goal kick. He, he kicked it with his his left when it should have been just tucked in with his with his right. I mean, you, you can you can sort of criticise our defending for that. You, you know, their their winger kind of just ghosted through the whole defence and 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 put, put a really good cross in. It deserved, you know, the chance deserved more. Um, and I, that was that was my real criticism after the game, or the only criticism after the game was we, we kind of almost let them back into it when the game was dead at two 0 we, we we allowed them a chance. The game should have been, you know, that should have been game set and match. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in Premier League, every every team's capable of, of doing something good. And uh, you know, they had a couple of moments. Burnley, and you're right, they probably did deserve to get on the score sheet. So uh, you know, to get a clean sheet was was great.
Yeah, it was good as well. Listen, I mean, we've been chatting away about it. But let's go back to listen to what the fans had to say uh, straight after the game. Uh, after the Burnley game in the terraces and also in the pub. Great game, well done. We've got our bees back. No, it was real zip and drive and mojo in that performance today. Uh, Burnley, I know the company tries to make them play a certain way, but it just doesn't work for them playing out from the back. Mopay was an absolute terrier. Uh, Norgard had one of his better games in midfield. And it was just great to see all over the pitch. And what two absolute belters of goals. What finishes. Unbelievable. I'm not sure how many shots they had, but we must have had about 25. And their player with the most touches has got to be their goalkeeper. And I'm not saying they were good touches either. <laughs> good, few good saves to be fair though. He, uh, in the first half, had a couple of good reflex saves, a couple of balls across the box he dealt well with. But over, overall, we just overran them in every area of the pitch. Uh, Jensen and Norgard in the back, in the middle rather, were imperious, completely run the midfield. They had a few runners, but they couldn't get past our defence. I thought we, we uh, Mopay was fantastic today, running around all over the place. Uh, as you say, that disallowed goal uh, was a shame because I thought it was really, uh, really, really well played by him. And uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you can hear us uh, celebrating like we won the Champions League. I thought we played really well, and um, and we just like came through it in the end and, and we sort of didn't make the mistakes we made in previous games I don't think we've been that bad this season but we've just made mistakes at the wrong time things have gone against us the way the ref was today I thought things could have gone a bit against us but I think the real move today Yad out left back I think that made a big difference it really gave us some solidity in the back four hell of a performance from Mbumo hell of a performance from everyone you've got to take it uh, I thought they looked solid going forward especially in the first half on the counter, uh, but we defended well. Hold on a minute! Stop! La 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 We have to do this! We haven't done this all season! Bouncing! Bouncing! There we go! Boo! You red! Go on, you red! Brentford were the best side today. They kept them at bay. Burnley didn't lay a glove. I thought we should have finished them off in the first half, but we did a good job in the second half to make sure of that couple of great goals as well and i think the good thing about today was we were quite nerveless yes we didn't we didn't look like it was a so maybe it's just the fans who think it's like a nine pointer i thought frank on had his best game for us today vitali at left back i mean it's not easy slotting in somewhere that you don't normally play i thought he was superb and that i thought neil morpe in two or three games i mean he, he set up one of the goals today he made a nuisance of himself um, and it's just, it's, yeah, he should have done probably, but he's just going to get sharper, isn't he? You know, and, and when he gets that first goal, he'll, you know, his link-up play was good. Um, and I, I thought the young lad Yamalia, I mean, he's superb. We've got a good result against a very poor Burnley team, though, so I worry for them for this the rest of the season. But we move on, we go on, and hey ho, up the bay! There you go, fans. Uh, it's fair to say. They're fairly happy about that. There was uh, no negativity, really, from the terraces. Everyone was really happy. Some really good goals. If anything, they probably it wasn't negative. But they were like, mm, we should have seen a few more. We could have won by four or five. But all I say to you is don't get too greedy. Like, you know, maybe let's just save that for now <laughs> next weekend. So anyway, but now just looking back at that game, I mean, look at the strengths and weaknesses for Brentford. Our strengths, we created a high number of chances relative to our possession. We created a, a, a goal-detouring opportunity through, through balls. Also, opportunities from the flanks and goal-scoring opportunities from set pieces. Uh, on the downside, we were aggressive. We had a large quantity of possession in their half as well. We attacked through the middle, had a high shot frequency when in possession and favoured through balls. As for Burnley... Uh, they had no significant strengths at all. They were poor at finishing, they were aggressive. They favoured long shots and attacked down the left side. I mean, if you look at the top players, Brian and Bumo, um, it was obviously, you know, uh, who, who scored.com completely disagrees with uh, uh, the character who was not happy with uh, Brian and Bumo at all. And they've given him 9.3, I believe it is, which is probably nearly as high as you can get. Um, I mean, we've had a few tens for the few seasons have passed, but 9.3 is this proper steaming right up there. Like I said, so after that was Christian Norgard with 8.1, Johan Risa with eight Neil Malpay with 7.4 and Christopher Ayer with 7.3 all Brentford players in the top uh, five of uh, who scored.com there as well you know we're talking about total shots Brian and Boomer with six Malpay with four Yispiso three Norgard with three and Frank the Tank on Yeka 
with two. So, like I said to you, it's uh, it was all looking rather favourable, bees wise, actually. Like, as, like I said, as we said, you know. So, uh, you know, listen, we can't really argue with that result at all, can we? No, no, not at all. No, it, it, it was so important to get because we got two really tricky away games coming up. So we we needed to get the the, the points that were kind of there for the taking. You know. Um, as I said, you know, I expected more from Burnley, but with our even even with our injuries, um, it's it, it was important that we kind of took you know three points on our home our home soil. So it was brilliant to hear that free from desire and, and and the dancing and the singing and that at the end it was it was very very welcome to hear that that song again. Yeah, and I mean, and there's a lot of people that you know were commented in the post match podcast about Neil Malpay. And sort of saying, you know, we're glad he's back, seeing him on sort of kind of home turf, but also saying that he's with a smile of his face. And he, he had a goal disallowed, which we, we haven't talked about that really, you know, but there's a goal that was disallowed um, early on. It's again, we, you know, we've got a bit of a VAR thing going on at the moment now where some of it times it goes for us, but sometimes it doesn't. And it's a little bit disappointing. And uh, so we were hoping that Neil Malpay could get off, uh, like I said, get out of the traps. Didn't quite get out of the traps as well, but... There's a lot of people saying that the way that he played, I mean, he set up the goal, beautifully set up the goal as well. And they're saying he's looking like he's back at home. He's looking like, you know, maybe he'd gone to Everton and he was a little bit kind of like a fish out of water there. And now he's in a home with a manager and a team around him who actually understand him. And they're thinking that it's probably not going to be too long before he actually gets off the mark. No, and it looked like he was in a system that was intelligent enough to to, to, to go, right, we've got Neil Moore paid back. What are we going to do with him? How are we going to use him? We, we didn't just bring him in um, and stick a you know stick a number on his back and go right go and score some goals. He he they obviously spent the last couple of weeks um, working hard. It was clear that they worked hard for for the you know getting some sort of wavelength between the three of them, um, and they 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 looked good. They they gelled. They clicked, and um, it was it was great to see. He he he, he knew what he was doing. Um, he looked gutted to get taken off at the end, and he looked gutted that he hadn't scored. Um, but I, 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 I firmly believe that it's, it's, it's a really positive loan signing, and um, it's, it's great to see him in a Brentford shirt again. He's, 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 he's really put in the shift on Saturday, Bill. Yeah, he did indeed. So listen, uh, we're going to go to JB. JB Jonathan Burchill, he loves to give us a bit of facts, some funk. He's going to give us some pre-Chelsea facts and funk. Jonathan Virtual back again. Saturday was the twelfth time Burnley have visited us for a home league game since the war, and the 3-0 was our best result in that time. There's something about Burnley that also inspires Sam and Godos, as it was only his second Premier League goal for us, with both coming against them. Defensively, it was our second clean sheet of the season after nine games, exactly the same as David Rea's record after nine games last season. It was our second win of the season, and our second 3-0. Last season, we only had two wins of three or more goals with clean sheets, Manchester United and Southampton. In our first Premier League season, there was just the one, also against Southampton. As we chalked up another five yellow cards in the game, it was the third game of the season where our opposition saw red, Fulham and Forest players also taking an early bath. That's as many games as in our two previous Premier League seasons combined. And so finally, since our last home win against Manchester City on the last day of last season, Peter Gillen was able to play our winning music selection of Celebration Rocking All Over the World and Freed From Desire after a gap of 146 days. But there we go, JB, Facts and Funk. Um, just getting us ready for the weekend. Be great at the weekend and uh, tell you what we're going to do though because we've had a little bit of stats we've thrown a bit of xg we've thrown in a little bit of kind of statistical knowledge there but we haven't got nearly as much statistical knowledge as the gowler based over in the states as well gowler from the the gowler from the bees breakdown massive and uh, they've actually broken down the burnley game and also looking forward to the chelsea game as well what we got to look forward to chelsea and also what happened in the burnley game bees breakdown 
Hey, this is Jacob Galler from Bees Breakdown here to do a quick Burnley review and then talk a little bit about Chelsea. So Brentford created 3.12 XG to Burnley's 1.15 with most of Brentford's XG coming in that first half. Burnley only had that one shot on target from six shots, which included missing a .92 XG chance with that open goal after that counterattack from that Brentford long throw. Uh, Rico Henry's usually the one there that's going to be the rest defense in those situations, but Mbumo got caught a little bit too far out of position when filling in for him. I definitely expect Hickey to take back that role going forward. Uh, the Bees used their high press to win back possession in Burnley's half, which led to quite a few chances. They still created their 23 shots in a variety of ways, building out of the back, set plays, underlapping fullback runs, which I thought Iyer did a phenomenal job on. Uh, and then those direct long balls too, which even led to that second yellow for Roberts that really put the game out of reach for him. All right, so moving on to that Chelsea match. They currently sit 10th in the Premier League, but they're unbeaten in their last three matches. Their expected goal difference is very similar to Brentford's. Chelsea have created less XG than Brentford this season, but they've allowed the third lowest XGA behind City and Arsenal. They're a very heavy possession side. They hold an average of 61% possession, and they have the highest progressive passing distance. However, Chelsea have not recorded nearly as many key passes or passes into the penalty area as one would expect. Uh, they're also massively underperforming their XG, having only scored 12 goals from 16.3 XG. Enzo Fernandez and Nicholas Jackson are the culprits here. They both have the worst goals minus XG in the Premier League, so they're getting plenty of chances, but they're just not finishing them. Uh, Chelsea also lead the Premier League with goals from defensive actions, which is partly due to their high press. They have the fourth lowest passes per per defensive action uh, PPDA although there has been a slight change recently with Chelsea allowing teams sitting in low blocks to have a bit more possession to try to draw them out uh, so it'll be interesting to see if Thomas Frank takes the bait and trusts his squad or if he instructs the team to sit back and just hit those counters so there you go the gala very happy but then we're all very happy at this moment in time and we go to this Chelsea game. I want to say we're going to be happy because I think quite a few people are pensive. I've seen a few things flying around saying, I'm not quite sure if we're going to get that third winner in a row because Chelsea are looking a little bit better than they have done, well, definitely last season and, and the season before when we gave them a right good hammering as well. They've, uh, they've, got, a, they've got a good, I have to say, they've got a decent manager in place and it's not going to be particularly easy for us. But then they're playing the mighty, mighty bees. Laney, look forward to this one. Yeah, I, I am. I am looking forward to it. I mean, I, I don't like going to Chelsea away. I don't think it's a, it's a great away day. I think the pubs are limited. Um, I, I, it's, it's not it's not one of my favourites for, for, for many, many reasons. But, um, yeah, as I alluded to earlier, it's not somewhere where I'm going to kind of fearful. Like, uh, we, we've done okay there the last couple of years, which means, you know, jack, jack shit, because, we, you know, we might, we might come unstuck this weekend um they are due to beat us i believe at, on their pit on their pitch but it's it, it's 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 quite an even game you know the, the form going into it is is we're, we're both we're both you know it, it should be a draw i mean you know there's a lot of a lot of these prediction sites are, are, are say it's going to be a draw but they are, I, I say they edge it um just because they have got they should have more quality um but what what we are and um, we're, we're we're more of a team. They're a kind of they're an evolving kind of unit of a lot of young potential talent. Um, where we we're set up and we we kind of know how to to go out there and we know how to perform. Um, we I don't think any of our players will be going there um, fearful, and they'll probably be very excited to go and make it three on the trot. So uh, I think Chelsea Chelsea have got everything to everything to lose and we've got everything to win. And I, yeah, I, so I'm looking forward to the match. Yeah, definitely looking forward to the match. I mean. I mean, again, 12.30 kickoffs. I'm going to say 12.30 is going to be on uh, well, TNT now, it's called, uh, old school BT Sport. Uh, BT Sport. Obviously, uh, our Americans and people out there, they've got a bit of an early, bit of an early riser. I don't know if the bar in New York is going to be open at six o'clock in the morning this time of 6.30. Maybe it is, actually. A good fair play to you. It's a big shout out for you lot as well, getting up and over in LA and on that West Coast, mate. You're going to be properly in front of uh, Peacock or whatever the, the channel is going to be that you're going to be watching that. It's going to be quite difficult. But 12.30 kickoffs traditionally laney they're not the one for us though are they 
No, it's, oh, I don't like early kickoffs. You know, I haven't got the stats in front of me, but I, I, I just don't like the vibe. I, I, it's, it's all, it's just, it just it seems unnatural to me. You know, I'm not gonna get on the, you know, Premiership, moving games around, and you know, playing games all, all kinds of times. I'm, I'm still kind of, you know, that's that's the price you pay for being here at the moment. Um, but uh, yeah, Saturday mornings, yeah, just well, for early, early, early lunchtime. 12.30 is not, not brilliant for me. Um, I like to have a couple of leisurely pints before a match and uh, they're going to be, if I do get anything, it's going to be rushed. So uh, we'll, we'll see. So, I mean, we, we talk about the Chelsea game, but what we normally do, we'll go to the opposition fan, but I'm going to have a little chinwag with a character that we all know out there, King Tut. Chelsea fan, been going to see Chelsea for 40 plus years as well. We thought, tell you what, we're going to sit down and have a good conversation with him. We're going to have 10 minutes with Tut talking about Chelsea so as you know we always like to get the away fans on to give us the lowdown on their team and we got the infamous King Tut in the house Tut how are you doing I'm good thank you I'm good yeah I tell you something you sound a lot more relaxed than you did the last couple of years when I spoke to you before the game you were a little bit fraught and frantic weren't you I wouldn't say fraught and frantic wouldn't be the description I would use slightly nervous yeah beforehand because uh yeah, I think I recognised that the Beans had got something going. You know, they'd come up, they were playing a certain type of football, they were doing well, and uh, we probably weren't always performing at our best. Uh, and I think, you know, what you had was, I think, a bit of the surprise factor. You had the underdog factor, you still carry that. You had the preparedness because I think you know your your manager is a great one for preparing for a game he knows how to set it out a team he knows that all that stuff and can take you by surprise so yeah, a little bit nervous last couple of games um, tomorrow is a, a totally left field game right okay so it's you know it, it's an unknown it's an unknown it's not it's an unknown. So let's let's just, let's let's just take you back to last season because obviously let's just you know just give us a little bit of a summary. You as a, uh, a Chelsea fan to say you know give us a summary about your last season just really briefly as well and give it a mark out of ten. Oh well, I suppose the thing about last season was it was a season in parts, wasn't it? You know, so we, uh, you know, it's, Part one. it was a it was a one off season. You know, um, we bought a lot yeah. of players. <laughs> we well, we bought a lot of players, yeah, and we still, I mean, bought a lot of you know, a lot of players in, uh, again in the summer, so un unheard of. I, you know, a billion quid, I think, is you know, what we spent, and that's just, you know, I, I don't know if any, I'd, I'd be interested to know if any other team has spent that much money in that short of time on players. Uh, we sold a lot of players though. So we balance the books very cleverly, I think. Saudis are very, very helpful. Very, very helpful to you, aren't they? You know, yeah, they are. They have been, and you know, I think that's what's one of the fantastic, one of the best things about what Abramovich did for us was the academy, right? And it's not just about producing players for the team; it's about producing players for the club and the sellable factor and the balance of the books and 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 that's and that's been great and if you look if you look at the the, the, the top two levels you know look at the cha uh, championship and the premiership the number of players that played in those clubs that started at chelsea academy are quite a large amount of players uh i don't think any other academies actually these days producing that number of players so that's in of itself a great thing and that's that gift to if to you, yeah, thank clubs. you. <laughs> that's all right, you know. That's fine. That's part. That's part. Of John Swift was was a marvelous player for us for the time that he was there for the few months that he was there. But thank you very okay. much, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay, some have hit, some have missed. Some of some of those players have gone on to really good things. Uh, some of those players, I wish we'd held on to. Some of those players, they weren't going to make at, at our level, but they'll succeed at other levels, and that's great. So as far as the academy goes, yeah, you know, I'm happy with that. Which is good. Uh, and I mean, there's an argument. Sometimes people say that, you know, the academy is one way of Chelsea actually dealing with the FFP issue because they did have an oligarch throwing lots of money into the club. But we won't go there. Just going back no, to it. So last... <laughs> so, uh, 
<laughs> we can go there if you want because what's wrong with that? Because we, we, you know, yeah, FFP is a thing that we've got to deal with. All clubs have different ways of dealing with it. I think we've dealt with it in a good way. Uh, you know, we're producing players, we're selling them. Uh, there's investment in, into the club from the owner, which was great at the time. It, you know, it's made us in a way what we are today, the standing we have today as a football club. That's what contributed it, that, that investment. Every club wants that investment. And many clubs obviously have followed our, our path on that. You know, Newcastle, you know, uh, and many others have, have taken that kind of inward investment. Uh, so that's football. It's, it's football. So just go back to last season, give us a marks out of 10 then for last season. Were you happy with it or are there things that you're not quite happy about? Um, I wasn't overall happy with what, where we ended up, obviously. But well, you weren't top um, of the West London Mini League, were you? <laughs> no, no, no. We weren't anywhere near that. And we weren't, it wasn't a successful season football wise for us, no. But, marks out, marks I was, out of 10. What I was, say again? Marks, marks out, out of 10. 10. Oh, uh, five. Five out of ten. Okay, which is cool. Which which gives you gives you a base to set for for this season. So coming to this season, okay. So yes. talk to us just briefly about the season because it's a it's a very different season, isn't it? It is. It is a very different season. Uh, we've got a manager who I think is going to do the business at Chelsea. He is. He seems to have great man management skills. Uh, I'm yet to fully get a view on his tactical skills but I think man management skills which is half of it as you know he's, 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 he's bringing the best out of those players he's got a whole new squad to deal with and that's that anyone knows knows their football knows you can't if you bring that many new players into a squad it's going to be difficult to get have a coherent team for a period of time a few months we're getting to that stage now against Arsenal I thought we played excellently you know, obviously we didn't get the result that we thought we should have got. We were lucky with the, the goals, I know, and everyone will be saying that, oh, you're lucky, lucky. But I think the way we played was really, really good. And, uh, you know, so I'm really happy with that. Uh, um, we're at that stage of the season now where we kick on, I think. And yeah. I think we'll see, you know, we'll see some really good football, uh, which I'm hoping will turn into results by, say, January. I expect to be in the top six in January. And who knows where we'll be in March. Oh, there you go. Fighting top yeah. from the tuts. Yeah. yeah, you know, and that's what it was about. You want, you want to be top half, you know. You want to be, if you're a club like us, you want to be top four. I don't yeah. know if we're going to get top four, but I think, you know, and apparently top five is good enough for Champions League this year. Yeah. To some newspapers. I don't yeah. quite understand yeah. it myself. Yeah. So I've just got to ask a question. We've got to ask as well, because look, we're, we're a little old Brentford. You've known us, you've seen us, you've been down there. We've been there for years as well. And you, you've been Chelsea and, you know, you, you can get a bit braggadocious sometimes. Uh, realistically, really, how did it feel when you were like, basically, you weren't even punching last season? You were just, you, were, you know, being all over the place by various teams. Like even us, we come down there, you know, beat you twice, four one at your place, you know, beat you at your place as well. Realistically, kind of how did it feel? Or is it just like, you know, because for us, we could take the feet because we're kind of used to it. But for you, it's very different. You're used to being up there. And all of a sudden, you're like thinking, we're well, not even competing. OK, so let's just, just retrack a bit. I went to football in the 80s and the 90s at Chelsea. We weren't a great team then. We we were glad of our few cut wins and stuff like that. But we weren't a massive club. The football wasn't attractive. You know, so, yeah, then I, we had the... You know, Mourinho years, we've had all everything since, and that we've won everything since, as you know, we won it all, you know. But I've been through that bad test. I know what it is to go through, you know, season after season where we're not playing well, or we're playing, you know, we, you know, not great football. Last season, it was it was a bit of a battering. Yeah, I, I'll hold my hands up and say that we got battered most of the season and it was just it wasn't comfortable it wasn't nice you know I'm not going to say anything else other than that really it was difficult to get through that season and a lot of turmoil we went through a lot of turmoil I mean I think that's what you know the neutrals need to know is that there were lots of 
factors around the club that meant that we weren't successful. OK, so I mean, just bringing it to this season as well, are you comfortable with the Chelsea squad this season? And just tell us, you know, what, what you what you excited about and maybe what could be better as well? OK, so the current squad at the moment, you know, is really painfully uh, injured. So many players out, you know, you know Reese James, you know, you know Reese James is a world-class player as far as I'm concerned. It makes all the difference when he plays, but he's injured quite a lot. You know, Chile's out now as well. Uh, so immediately, you know, uh, uh, the, the new guy, and I, to a bit, I can't even know how I pronounce his name, but Nukuku or Nukunku, or whatever, I don't know how you pronounce it. He's, been, he's not been able for us. And we bought him as a possible centre forward, which is, as you know, number nine. We've always lacked a proper number nine. Uh, since Drogba probably really, you know, a regular goal scorer, that sort of player, uh, Lukaku would be disappointment. So now we were hoping that we were going to have something this season in that position. But we're still playing false nines. Uh, we played Palmer as a false nine against Arsenal. Uh, you know, he did a good job. I thought he was a great player, a really fantastic player, actually. And I think he could be one of our finds, one of our massive finds, because I don't think he played much at City as far as I was aware, but when he's played for us, he's looked really top class. Um, so that's, you know, a lot of players out, a lot of injuries, uh, a lot of players still finding their feet. Uh, Mudrik hopefully has found his feet now, I and mean, you know, look, he looks class. He does look like Should have gone to the Brentford. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he should have done, maybe he should have gone to Arsenal, who knows, but he didn't go any of those places. He took, you know, he came to Chelsea. So, wise <laughs> move him. Uh, you know, good move, actually. And I think, you know, to be fair, you know, Poch is getting the best out of him now. And he's gonna, I think he's going to turn out to be a really, really good player. Um, midfield, you know, Connor. Connor's settled, settled now in, in that position. Uh, he, he's, That's Connor he's Gallagher. Somebody, hmm? Connor Gallagher. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Connor Gallagher. Yeah, uh, you know, went to Palace, looks really good. Came to us, looked like a bit out of his depth, first of all. But that's because he was, you know, under pressure and unsettled and he's settling into it now, he's captain. I think he's going to be, you know, another Frank. You know, I think he is going to be, he'll be an England player, you know, regular, I think. He's got that kind of class. So, yeah, um, looking looking good there. Defensively, you know, um, Silver's great, but he is now kind of, getting his bus pass, you know, and I think he's kind of he's gonna go back to South America and be fantastic for us. But you know, we need to really fill that gap now. Um Badashiel still injured. You know, he to me he looked like he was gonna be a real class player. Uh and I think he still will be if he comes back from an injury okay. Um but we need to have that a solid defence now, which we haven't got keeper, obviously, as you know <laughs> We're, we're strapping with the keeper and uh, you know we might come in for your keeper I don't know you know January who knows uh, right. maybe he wants to move some people uh, might some people might say you can have him at the moment but that, that's just a, <laughs> that's just me being you know just having a few little jokes with you there as well yeah, uh, yeah. Well, but, you know. same at Arsenal I mean you know who's their keeper you know RX Ramsdale. keeper David Raya yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that's right you know Ramsdale we, we might buy him I don't know you know we're strapping around I think We've got to get that keeper sort. We we need a proper keeper in there, you know. And look at Peter Check and what he was like for us. We haven't had that since. We've had, we had these big names come in that have not performed uh, or wanted to go elsewhere or whatever, you know. So, and I think most clubs are like that. They want a solid keeper. And so if we get, yeah, go on. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. So we talk about keepers and we talk about big names coming in. I'm um, just questions though. Big names coming in to perform. Uh, Rumours about Ivan Tony, you know, and Chelsea being interested in Ivan Tony. Would he be a good fit for your side? I mean, you'd have to pay the money. I mean, there's rumours flying around about fifty thousand, fifty million dollars for Chelsea, and there's been a lot of laughs saying <laughs> fifty million, absolutely no chance of getting for fifty million. But moving to the 80, 90 million mode, then maybe that might take the case. Now, Chelsea are known for splashing the cash. Do you think they'd splash the cash in Tony because he is going to go within the next twelve months? Oh, I mean, I suppose, I, as I, as Ivan himself might say, yeah, I'll put my money on that, you know, uh, but uh, have a gamble, if you like. Uh, I don't know if Ivan Tony is quite 
the article that we need, to be honest with you. And I know he's played well for you, looked really good for you. I'm not sure uh, if he came to Chelsea, he would be able to perform at the level that we need him to. And I know that sounds harsh and all your Brentford fans will be, you know, upset by that because you love him. But I don't know. He looks like he's, he's a good player, but hmm, I'm not so sure. He only, so, scored, he only scored 20 plus goals last season. Yeah, you know, yeah, behind yeah, Harry, know, Gay, Harry Kane and, 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 and Har- Ireland. Yeah, you know? stats, stats always there. But that's, that's not stat, that's, that's facts. He scored 20 plus that's, goals. That's, that's, <laughs> you know, he did. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not so sure about him. Okay. Uh, that's, that's just my opinion. That's just my yeah. opinion. And you're allowed an opinion. If he comes, huh? you're allowed an opinion. Definitely. <laughs> if he comes and, and the, we'll see, you know. Um, yeah. But you're not convinced. The thing is that, like I said to you, you're not convinced. And like I said, it's going to cost a lot of money, but you're not convinced. But saying that as well, because you spent a lot of money on lots of other players that literally did not perform, um, yeah. you know. So Lukaku. Lukaku. Look and at Lukaku. Yeah. I mean, Lukaku just didn't turn up, you no. know. Uh, no. He was a bystander in every game he played. It was just awful. And, you know, do... I know it's not quite the same money, but fifty million, yeah. It's gonna be more than fifty. We're talking about eighty million. We're talking about, about eighty million, million now for, for Tony. Mm. Is that that's is right. that what the that's what I'm just saying. saying. Just, I'm just saying. So look, look, you look, let's just move on from that anyway. So last season, the bees. And Chelsea, I know that you were sort of quite, you know, in the same zone when you played at us, our place. It was a, well, like I said to you, it was a game which was quite close, which, if anything, actually, Brentford should have won at our place. And it's probably a sign as to what was going to happen at Chelsea, where Brentford got their second victory in successive seasons at Stamford Bridge. You know, just talk, talk us through those games quickly, or, or, or it's a bit of a blur, you don't want to talk about them. Yeah, I can't quickly. really remember them, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's just it. It's funny that. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean... It, we were punch drunk at that stage, you know, I think. And and good, well done, well played, you know, uh, Brentford. And good, you know, the manager knew what he was doing and picked us off. And it's in the past. It's, it means nothing now, to be honest with you. It means nothing for tomorrow. We're a different team. I mean, literally a different team. Yeah. I to, uh, you know, how many players played in those two games that are still with us? I, I don't know, not many. No, uh, no, no. So, to be so, honest with you, different team, different manager, different philosophy, different attitude. Uh, I think, you know, we have, if you'd played us a month ago, I would have said the three points are yours, because I thought, you know, you, you would have turned up and, and done a number on us. Now we seem to have turned a corner. It's going to be a slightly harder game for you to win. Now, I'm not saying you can't win it, but. Um, so, so there's no Brentford players that might concern you. I'm just wondering, is anyone out there that might, obviously at Tony's out, but is anyone that might concern you, you think actually tell us something, we've got to watch that player because if that player does something, then we could have a bit of a bit of a situation on. Uh, nobody springs to mind at the moment. I'm sure you've got, you know, some... some Brian and Bume. <laughs> Brian and Bume. Brian and Bume. Never heard of him. I mean, you know, I like him. I like him and I think he's, he's, he's nippy and, you know, scores goals and can cause you problems but no I wouldn't say he's uh, earth shatteringly you know dangerous but you know if I mean at the moment for us yeah we're vulnerable in defence as I've already said we're vulnerable with a keeper possibly yeah but um, you, you sound confident that you'll be able to hold us at bay no 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 I'm not, not I wouldn't say I'm not overconfident what I'm saying is we've turned the corner so we're we're now in a position where, as I said a month ago, you you would have you would have won this game. Uh, now I think we're a bit more organised. As I say, midfield Connor and Enzo, I think we're looking a little bit more, you know, uh, more solid in the midfield. I think if the defence turns up and the keeper doesn't have a mare, then we're going to be okay. But again, with Frank, I think he always. He turns up and he knows what he's going to do. He don't always do it, but he knows. He, he's a great reader of other teams. He's a great, I think, he's a great strategist in that sense that he knows what he's playing. And he knows what to put out to, against it. So I think you'll give us a good game. I just think my, 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 I'm edging towards thinking we'll get a win. And that's just only edging. 
So this is, listen while you're at it then. So give us a score prediction. Well, you see, that's the problem. Because even a few weeks ago, I would have said, well, we're probably not going to score. But now I think we just enter into that phase where we're starting to score. So I think we'll score two. I think depending on our defence and keeper, you could score one or two. So I'm looking at either us 2-1 or 2 all draw. Give us give pick, pick, from, pick from one of them. Let's say it's us 2-1. 2-1 to Chelsea. So listen, listen, this is the King Tut there in the in the, the West London zone, actually. Sort of, uh, yeah, the North Kensington King Tut as he is. Chelsea fan through and through. He's been supporting them for years. And you can see there's a little bit of confidence in there, but he doesn't want to say too much as yet because I know the last two years, the overconfidence actually kind of showed that he was completely and utterly wrong. But this is, as I said, football friends between us. Like I said, we have lots of banter between ourselves. You know, when we lose and he has a laugh when we lose, they lose, we have a laugh, so that's how it goes in football. We have a beer together still before and after the game. So listen, enjoy yourself on Saturday. Don't enjoy yourself too much, and maybe I might join you for a swift pint after the match. Fair enough, yes. Depending on the result, yeah? Of course. <laughs> so there you go, Chelsea's characteristics, as they say, their strengths, creating chances for individual skill, and also in the air, they're good they're very good for their skill. The weakness is defending th through uh, through ball attacks. Also, stopping opponents from creating chances and avoiding offside. They're very weak. They like short passes, attempt through balls often, attack down the right, possession football, and they're aggressive. I mean, the, the Gowler obviously talked about Chelsea and how we're going to probably attack them, how we're going to actually take them out. But, um, but Laney, uh, listen, we know that they're a good side, but there you can see that there are opportunities there for the Bees to, to take about, isn't there? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I went on to a podcast last night with a guy called uh, Johnny Minerals, and he, he 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 wasn't looking forward to the game at all. He he, he spoke at length about you know something I said a little bit earlier. They're, they're not a team. Uh, they they've got no identity. They don't. There's no real style of play. Um, they, their midfielders up until you know this point don't really contribute with with goals. Um, and they're they're weak in in several key areas, and he, he alluded to Pochettino um, being tactically outmaneuvered by Arteta last last weekend. In that they were two 0 up, and they, Arsenal came back and drew two two. Um, we need to play at our strengths. We need to not make silly mistakes. Flecken needs to be rock solid, no flakiness like we saw with David Raya for Arsenal last weekend. If we if we're on top of our game, we we soak their pressure up. We hit them hit them hard. Um, we've got a lot of pace up front. Um, it'd be just lovely to to see see Neil Morpé giving it the full shit housery in front of their fans with his arms held wide like he's done so often against Leeds. You know, I I, I think maybe tomorrow's the day that Neil Morpé comes back and scores a goal. Bill. Good to. I mean, interestingly. Uh... Chelsea fans are actually lauding uh, Conor Gallagher, obviously, who we know him from, I said, the lower leagues as well. I mean, always, I always give props to the players who went down the lower leagues. They do their business in the lower leagues, then they come back up again. Uh, and he's, like I said, lower leagues. They went over to Crystal Palace uh, and then he found his home back at Chelsea. I think at the time, the Chelsea fans were a little bit like, mm, not sure about that. But they seem to be quite happy with him at the moment now. He could cause a few problems, though, couldn't he? He could do if he gets 90 minutes. He's, he's, he's very, very foully, isn't he? I'm, I'm going to put a... I'm going to put five quid on Conor Gallagher and Frank the Tank both getting booked tomorrow. It's so, so Tony, Tony Laney, Tony, Tony, Tony Tonali Laney, yeah? Yeah, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not a professional footballer. I'm allowed to do it. Um, yeah, they, 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 you know, he, if, if he, he is a good player. Don't get me wrong, you know, but he, if, if, he, if uh, when he doesn't get his own way, he takes players out and he, he does pick up a yellow all the time. And I think... You know, our, our coaching staff will know that. I think they'll identify it. I think it's a game that's going to be a lot of bookings tomorrow. That's the way the last few games have gone, especially against us. You know, the, 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 the Man United game, we got five plus yellows. Um, same again against Burnley. I don't think I don't think we were dirty in the, in the, the conditions um, last weekend were atrocious in that rain. It was di just really difficult to, uh, to 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 go in with a tackle um, slowly. You know, it's just the speed, the speed of the ball and the speed of the pitch. So um, yeah, uh, they ha they have got some incredible players, and you know the Mudric he, he got on the score sheet um, last weekend. Um, he's, he's things are going his way a little bit more than they did 
you know, earlier on in the season, certainly last year, he's looking like more of a player that, you know, we thought we were in for and they thought they were signing. So, um, yeah, they, they've, got, they've, got, they've got talent all over the place, but uh, Frank, you know, Thomas Frank will be aware of all of this. You know, I, I, I don't question Thomas Frank's tactical nous ever anymore. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's going to out tactic the potch if, um, if 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 we're in the, if we're in the game, you know, if, if Chelsea don't run away with it early on and we can we can keep in it, um, the further the game goes on, the bigger chance we've got of winning. That's right. So talking about winning, uh, and I'm not putting words in your mouth here, Lane. We've got a score prediction coming out of your li- lips. <laughs> my lips. Well, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go two-one defeat. Actually, that's 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 my prediction. We're going to lose two-one. But I am um, delighted to be wrong on this. All right, okay. And I'm going to go one all to the mighty, mighty bees on this one as well. So listen, this is the Besotted Pride of West London podcast. Thanks very much for listening to us. It's quite a short, sharp, snappy one this week because we need to get ourselves ready and get down to Stamford Bridge tomorrow morning, which is not very long from when we finish recording this podcast. Like I said to you, don't forget to buy us a beer, besotted.com forward slash beer. Thank you very much to everyone that's bought us a beer so far. Also, don't forget, uh, we've got Besotted Global out there as well. And don't forget to write us a review and actually subscribe to all good podcast channels and just just write a review and just do really good things for us as well but like i said to you thank you very much we'll see you down at chelsea like i said to you if you don't catch you before the game there's a few pubs that are open before the game the ones that we normally go to on the on the running there's a few putney and sort of kind of east putney and all that kind of area there's a few pubs around there that are open earlier which we're going to be frequenting but if not we'll be in the pubs afterwards in the area the ones that actually let you in won't we laney yes absolutely yeah. that's right so this is Billy B. B Grant here and we've got Laney in the house afternoon mate and we'll catch up with you after the game tomorrow Saturday uh, Chelsea come on you bees come on you Brentford West London top of the league is ours West